Trans Ham. I went through New York, bro. <laughs> <laughs> So we've been at location two, which we're not going to say where it is in New Jersey, discussing with the owner for about two and a half hours. We came to buy a 69 GT350 Shelby, which we did buy. However, the parts are scattered in multiple locations, but while we were here, we found two more Shelbys. I'm not going to tell you what they are. They're both very special. We're working a deal right now to buy all three. so. Hopefully you'll see that in the future, and I believe you will. We're coming back in eight weeks to rescue three Shelbys that have been off the road since the early 70s. Outstanding. So now we're on our way to Silver something. Where are we going, Zach? Little Silver. Now we're on our way to Little Silver from an undisclosed location in New Jersey because the Shelbys are a secret. But we're going after a 1977 CJ5 Renegade Levi's edition black V8 super nice Jeep that we sold 16 years ago. When we had it at Calls Brother 16 years ago, this Jeep was actually featured in quite a few magazines, lots of websites. It was a 14,000 mile example that was phenomenal. To find a P1 black V8 CJ5 Renegade Levi's edition from 1977 is really difficult. Well, the guys enjoyed it for the last 16 years, and now it's 39,000 miles on it. However, we haven't agreed on the price, and he wants big money for it, but I'm confident we're gonna get it bought. So hopefully you see that on the trailer. Wish us luck, here we go. So we're in Little Silver, New Jersey, almost all the way to the coast. Uh, hopefully going to buy back a 1977 CJ5 that Collins Brothers sold in 2006, 16 years ago. Let's see what happens. It's been a while since we've been to the front door. Father, hi. How are you, sir? David Spencer. Dennis Collins. Nice to meet you. You too, sir. Hello. How's it going? This is Zach on the camera. Hey, Zach. How's how are you? Good. How are you? Good, good, good. Um, how do you want to do this? Let's go check Let's it go. out. Let's go take a look. I haven't seen it in 16 years. <laughs> now... Uh, I bought it from Jim. That is your father? That's my dad, that yes, sir. That is your dad, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, I tried to keep it as... This Jeep was actually featured on Project Survivor two weeks ago. You're kidding. No, nope. there was a story on it from when we had listed it before, before wow. you bought it. Right, right, right. Okay. So, uh, I went through my records. I bought this Jeep with 14,000 miles on it. 14, no, I got it 14,850. Yep. Okay, so what does it have on it now? 39,650. So you, you've enjoyed it? I've absolutely enjoyed it, probably 2,000 miles a year. It's great. Is, uh, which is, you know, 7 Eleven and ShopRite. And Most of the time when I sell a, a collector level Jeep like this, they don't get driven. So it's uh, neat that correct. you've used it. Yeah. I no. mean, they just generally go into a collection and don't get touched. No, I, I try to keep it out of the rain, keep it out of the snow, days like today, and it's just, as you can imagine, way too much fun. So. Well, I'm going to thank you for taking such I, good I care tried, of it. I tried, I <laughs> tried. Um, all right, just want to roll So when out. you walk up in the back of the Jeep, guys, and you can tell it's a 77, because that is one year only fuel fill. The 76 has got the grommet here for the round, and then the 78 and up have got the rectangular fuel fill. So we know it's a 77 by walking up on it. Obviously, I knew that anyways, because I used yeah. to own it. <clears throat> That's interesting. My brother has a 76 Levi's Blue Renegade, and I was okay. there yesterday. I had not seen it, and he had that grommet. Right, and, I and that's one year only. I did not know that. So. so when you're dealing with the 76 and 77s, as, as you know, you're familiar with Collins Motors because you bought the Jeep from us, these are the most difficult to restore because okay. there are proprietary items that are one year only. Oh, lovely. So for me, getting the opportunity to purchase back a 77 right. that I know is correct right. is great. Okay, good. I do have a question, though, and I don't remember this. Did we put the AC in this for you? It was there when I got it. Was it so there? you did it. Uh, okay, so it was it was advertised with air. Uh, apparently. Okay, because yeah, these did not come, you could not get AC in a CJ5. Okay. So, in, yeah. honest, in, but when you open the hood, you can tell it's not a factory unit because it would be a York's compressor and it would have had a anti-vibration dampener bracket up here on the radiator. So, I don't remember the story of this AC. Um, well, the good news is it works. 
Does it really? Yes, it does. It blows cold air. So it's a radial compressor. It would have been a York's compressor. What else is really neat, and when you sent me the pictures of it, is this is a two-year only air cleaner, 7677. But however, it still has the original cartridge decal on here, which is very unusual for that to survive. Oh, good. And very unusual for this 304 decal to survive as well. I got another one for you. What's that? A 304 decal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you do? I do. Outstanding. And your father sent it to me with two owner's manuals. Wow. <laughs> feeling generous that day. And there's one thing that Kevin and I in our shop used to pride ourselves saw back in the day. We don't do it that much anymore because people don't really appreciate it. Is when these Jeeps left Carl's Rotors, they all had smog on them. So you know, your smog pump's here. It's all still hooked up. Your air, your air, air rails are here. Backfire valve's still here. I don't know if you have to have that New Jersey pass inspection or not. Well, it's registered as a historic vehicle, so I just bypass all the... Uh, okay, so that doesn't matter. But you did have to. You, okay. Yeah. That may have been one of the parameters why you bought this Jeep. I don't know if it was or not, but like Colorado still has those rules in California. So we do get a lot of buyers out of those states because they know that we will have all the correct smog equipment on there, which is difficult to come by because most people took it off. Uh, P1 Black, which is a very rare color. Really? I don't know if you knew that when you bought it. I did not. I, I had a 77 CJ5 in college in Colorado. It was just black on black. It was nothing. Okay. That's how I got hooked. And then it was like I saw it online. I'm like, I think I would really like to buy that. Jeep didn't like to paint these black because it showed all the weld marks and all the rivet marks. All the weld marks down which the side you, of the Jeep. You, and you can, can see them. Yeah. Uh, which you want to see them. It's kind of hard, that doesn't really translate a camera very well, but you can see all these marks here, which you want to see, which means this Jeep has not had paint work. Correct. Um, which is You great. didn't do it, I didn't do it. Right, so, no, this yeah. is an original paint Jeep. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome to see. But what happened was that these would hit the showroom and somebody ordered one and they would complain about it. Oh, oh, oh. So and, and, Jeep, the, and the customers Jeep. would kick them. Right. So a lot of times when the orders came in on the black, it was the fact to be like, look, you guys own this. You know, if you want to put it on, if you, yeah. it's up to the dealer. You're you're not kicking it back, so that was kind of an issue. Another really neat thing about the seventy six seventy sevens is this: uh, the radio chassis was not a thin chassis. The, the a, optional a, radio was optioned out. It was, yes. but, but it was a smaller style chassis. So that radio delete plate would have only come on a seventy six or seventy seven. Okay, crazy rare. Oh, really, really rare. Cool. And, the, and the radios were very expensive. An AM radio was $232. AM FM was $258. <laughs> so, well, I mean, that was huge money back then. So what did this list for sell for? Seven, eight, do you think, back in uh, I think this was around $7,000. Okay. Uh, being a, a V8, power steering, power brake, Levi's. Levi's edition, a yeah. Nice loaded Jeep. Yeah. Again, we got original seats because they do say Levi's. So what's neat about... The Levi's seats carried all the way through 79, but in 79 they didn't say Levi's in them anymore, and they didn't have Levi's on the Jeep because they got in a trademark deal with Levi's and whatever, it went south. <laughs> so, it's uh, nice. What a country. Catalyst stickers here. Mm -hmm. So, again, it has smog. If it didn't have smog, that decal would say non-catalyst. Okay. Um, looks like, did, was that clocking it when you got it? No, that's... You replace that? Two or three of them. Do you have the original one by any chance? I don't. Okay. So the original clock for this Jeep would not have been quartz. It would have been solid state. Okay. Which is why they don't work. Uh, so what, well, we, what we do now is we take the original solid state ones, because they don't say quartz, and we put a quartz movement in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks better. And it works. Correct. Right, I'll give you that. Okay. okay. So the, other than that, it looks like original carpet's still in it? Correct. Uh, Here's something the Jeep guys that are watching this right now are just going to freak out on is those are real Americana floor mats. These are not the reproduction ones. So the reason I know that is because we did not reproduce these until about 2010. And came so which means yeah. and he bought this Jeep in 06. So these are actually, these are real Americana floor mats. Very desirable. Outstanding. Keep talking, Dennis. The price keeps going up. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't mean to do that. So uh, we're going to cut the camera off for a second. I'm going to see if I can buy this back. All right, so we got a deal. Uh, as you all know, I never say what the price is, but it is more than I sold it to him for 16 years ago. So you got to enjoy this for 25,000 miles, and you made money. Correct. Not a bad deal, Not right? Not a bad deal. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let me go uh, grab the bag, and we'll do the paperwork, and we'll get it out of here. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, Dennis. sir. Thank you for being such an incredible caretaker of this.
You want to drive it one more time, David? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm good. I do sure? appreciate that. I'm okay. Just, this you want to run around the block one more time? Right? Uh, okay. okay. Thank you. I I ever was 40%. Hi. Hi. <laughs> e brakes on it's in first gear All right. another cool piece of trivia this is kevin mccarthy's favorite jeep of all time which kevin is my general manager in his service department okay this is what he drove in high school oh, a on. black v8 77 god bless him so you already got a buyer no uh, <laughs> he's not getting it as a gift <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh. all right david thanks again for being an incredible caretaker of that jeep Thank you. I'm super excited to get it back. Good, good. I'm, I'm glad you're taking it. I really am. So. And last question. Yes. Best restaurant or your favorite restaurant in town? Uh, I would have to say Angelica's in Seabright. It's about three miles down the road on the ocean. So. I actually told Zach I hope we meet on the ocean. Well, you're more than welcome to join us if you have time. If not, we're heading that way. Oh, um, I, I can't. I've, I've got to get to, up to... Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Fair enough. Thanks again. So, I yeah. really appreciate you yeah, calling. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're getting on the trailer and go to Angelica's. So I went ahead and Googled Angelica's because he didn't think we could get in there because I guess it's a highfalutin place, which I'm pretty sure we could talk ourselves into it. But it says it is permanently closed. So fortunately, it wasn't on camera, but I asked him what a backup restaurant would be. And he said River Rock, which is also on the water. So I'm going to see if I can find that. So here we go to River Rock. Okay, we're at River Rock close to the Jersey Shore. I'm not actually sure where we are, but it's a river. We were hoping to go to the ocean, but I don't think we're at the ocean. I'm sure it leads into. So we'll do the cheese steak taquitos, spinach artichoke dip, mac and cheese bites for Zach, fried pickles, Cajun bites. Steak or tuna? Steak. And what do you recommend? What's your favorite in this section? Appetizers. And this one, the drunken clams are really good. Right. Calamari's good or the hot rock and shrimp. And we got to do drunken clams just because it's a cool name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll start off with that. Okay. We haven't had a Philly cheese. We're from Texas. So Can you tell? we're going back tonight. So we got to have a Philly cheesesteak, right? Okay. Yep. All right, I'm doing that. And not the chicken. Yeah, a real one. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, and Zach wants the dynamite chicken crunchy wrap thing. Sure. I do? Yes, you do. Okay. Uh, can I do no lettuce, tomato, or onion? Yeah. No, no, no. What do you want, Sean P? Um, I mean, we're close to New York, right? So we got to do pizza on top of that. Okay. I'll eat, I'll eat a piece of it. So what kind of topping? It's Which like pizza a, has the most stuff on it? Like a meat lover's? Uh, the meat lover's, yeah. There you go, boom. <laughs> we might be getting a little OC now. Just put it somewhere. All right, so we got spinach dip, mac and cheese triangles. This kind of looks like a like a cheese taquitos. All right, wow, cheese steak taquitos, fried pickles. What is that? Asian steak place. Nice. Okay. Bam. There's the I clams. Have, oh. Drunken clams. Drunken clams. Okay. I think I gotta do that first. I don't even know how you eat a drunken clam. Okay, wow, it's hot. Woo. Somebody stop me. Let's see the Zach cheese. Okay. Drunken clam first. Great flavor, wow. I've been craving this. It's the first thing that's close to a Philly cheesesteak. It's a Philly cheesesteak egg roll thing. I'm not sure you're supposed to do that, but. It's like a marinated beef. What is it? 
It's really good. Where's the song? <laughs> wow. It's really tender. I bet you this fried pickle tastes like a fried pickle. That's true. It does, Sean. Yeah. I don't believe you. Great atmosphere. We're close to the Jersey Shore. We're not on it. So what I'm really looking forward to is my Philly cheesesteak. So we'll come back to that in a minute. We're taking half that. Oh, for sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. So we're. We're in this area, obviously you think about pizza. Yeah, oh yeah. And you think about Philly cheesesteak, and we're actually flying out of Philadelphia tonight. You gotta have half that, Sean P. Oh, man. And they actually do taste better when you're up in this area. Why is that? I don't know. I think they know how to make them, but we don't know how to make them in Texas. That is really good. So who ordered jalapenos? I did. Oh. Oh my gosh. Meat lovers pizza. Thin crust, which I love. This thing is hot. Oh, she'll help you. Oh, that's hot. All the meats. Good call on this restaurant. Okay, well, that's it. We had nine items. How about you, Zach? Well, let's see what Zach's dynamite crunch thing is going to do. Give me the camera. So, what do you guys think of Zach's new hairdo? <laughs> it's high and tight. <laughs> Well, it had the best description on the menu. It did. It did, but I took like half of it off. Oh yeah, you guacamole cheese. Chicken. So how were your uh, macaroni and cheese dinosaur bite things? I liked them. I thought they were good. <laughs> wow. Well, River Rock rocked. Great restaurant. What'd you think, Sean P? Dude, that was outstanding. The appetizers were really good. That marinated beef was incredible. Yep. Philly cheesesteak. Got my fill on that. The Gotta oven, have one of those in this area. Oven and the pizza was, was great. Pizza yeah, actually tastes like a Egyptian style pizza. Yep. Like Campisi's, one of my favorites. Right. Now we're off to the airport, Philadelphia. All right, we've had a lot of requests lately for updates. So what we're gonna try to do is put an update at the end of every coffee walk. Let us know if you like this idea or not. Now, this is one of the trucks off of Coffee Walk episode 204. Yes, this is an iced coffee. It's late in the afternoon. Great over ice, too. Holy Grail blend. Blue Island coffee. This is a 1987, which is the last year's square body. It's an R1500 GMC Sierra Classic. What's really unique about this truck is it is a three-speed on the tree, which is very rare for a 1987. That's code MM3. So... It's got reverse lockout. We're gonna go ahead and do a cold start. So you got first gear, second gear, third gear. Very rare to see this on a late a truck this late. Now, this has been parked since 1993. You can see the inspection sticker right there. The seat had a cover put on it when it was brand new. So this is the first time this seat's seen the light of day. The steering wheel had a cover on it when it was new. The shift knob had a cover on it when it was new. It even had a cover around the rear view mirror so you couldn't touch any of it. This is in a private collection, climate control garage. The truck turned out absolutely amazing. If you go back to episode 204, you'll notice that it had a camper on it and it had a piece of carpet in the bed. So if you look at the bed, it looks like it's never been used. Absolutely an exceptional condition. It's power steering, power brakes, AC. What else is unusual about this truck is it's a V6. Now you're thinking, oh no. Well, I've driven this truck, it's got plenty of power. The fuel injected V6 is about 10 horsepower different than a 304 carbureted four barrel truck. So it runs and drives really well. So what do we have to do with this truck since it's sat for so long? Since 1993 for 29 years, we replaced both gas tanks, both seating units, fuel pump. We replaced the injectors and changed all the fluids. Put one can of R12 or one, uh, actually one can of R12 or R134, I don't know which one this one took, and to get the AC cold. But look at the engine bay, absolutely amazing. Look how clean everything is. 
But what I really want you guys to see is I want you to click on the link above and see the chassis on this truck. This is a 40,000 mile truck, and I bet you y'all will agree with me that it almost looks new in the chassis. This was never out in inclement weather. So there's our first update. Hope you like it. Let us know what you think. Like, tag, share, follow, and all that other stuff.